Welcome to the H2O Driverless AI installation video for Google Cloud. In this video, we'll walk through the process of installing H2O's Driverless AI product in the Google Compute Cloud. First thing we'll do is navigate to the docs in H2O. Right? We go online to the H2O website, select the download link, and here are a number of links for different products, open source, things that can be downloaded. We're interested, of course, in Driverless AI, so we'll select that. We get to a page with a little bit of information in particular a couple of links. The documentation here is in this yellow link and this first one is for getting a trial license key for driverless AI. We'll need that key so we'll start off by providing our name, first and last name, company, email address, etc. and then say send me a trial license. That'll automate a process for emailing you a license which we'll need later on. I've already done that and have the email stage so I don't need to do that at this point but I will now jump to the documentation. This is online documentation for all of the driverless AI product. The installing driverless AI link here in the menus allows me to now go in and look at the instructions for installing driverless AI in a number of environments. Documentation talks about GPUs and the way the system works, talks about the minimum for disk space and amount of memory we want. Um, and there's this quick start table, which is interesting, that shows requirements and environments in which we can run driverless AI. There are a number of cloud offerings, there are individual server setups as well as desktop environments. We're going to install in Google Compute, so we'll select that link and jump to that section of the documentation. There are about, I don't know, 15 or so steps here for installing within Google Compute. So the first thing we'll do is access that Google Compute environment. I've logged in here in my browser, and I'll now jump to the first step, which is to go to the Compute Engine VM Instances page. Here I'm offered the opportunity to create a new VM and I'll go in and the first thing we'll do is give it a name, DAI, and select a zone. It's defaulting to my locale of US East 1B. There are a number of zones we could select. Some of these can do GPU enabled uh, virtual machines. If we were doing a GPU enabled install, we would want to select a zone that supports GPUs. There is a web page from Google that talks about what zones support it. That's referenced here in the documentation. Open that link and jump to it and it talks all about GPUs in Google and here's the list of the different zones and the types of GPU support they provide. So if you wanted to do a GPU instance, you would want to be sure to select the appropriate zone where you could have those GPUs. So now selecting the machine type, I'll come in and probably be okay for this simple trial here with eight CPUs, 54, 52 gigs of memory. That may change depending on your use case, the number of uh, the size of data, the number of projects and things you're running. I'll also want to change the operating system to Ubuntu 1604 and ensure that I have enough disk space. If I wanted to um, do GPUs, that would have been done in here as well, right? Uh, not this screen, but back here on this one. I'm sorry, customize your machine type. In here, I could have selected GPUs, right, and then decided how many GPU cards I wanted and what type I wanted. But again, since I'm doing CPU, I don't need to configure that. So we've got our operating system configured. Um, I like to add SSH keys. The uh, documentation online simply talks about uh, using the Google browser-based SSH to gain access to the VM we create. But I also like to SCP data up, so I want to add my own SSH key. I have a key staged here, my public key that I use for these online systems and I can paste that in here and add that item. I can now create the instance. So this takes a little while to come up, not very long really, a few seconds. And back looking at the documentation after create, they then suggest we create firewall rules to open up the TCP port 12345 which driverless AI runs on and do it for all instances in the network. So if we come back here, that's still uh, spinning up. But in the meantime, we can go to the VPC network tab and firewall rules, and we can create our own firewall. So if I come in and say, create a new rule, give this thing a name, DPC1. Um, we want to come in and specify the targets, all instances in the network. IP ranges, we want to do 0. Oh, let's delete that. 
0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
right as start.sh. That's not working. Let's go back here and try it. So we've got ls ls script ivi scripts dot s scripts slash start dot sh. Paste that in there. There we go. Change mod plus x by scripts start sh. Get rid of this window. Whatever I'd done there was. Not working right. So I've got that back to my instructions. So we've done that, and we can do this to get our instance up and running. Whoop. Copy it. Come in here. We want to load of 1.0.18.gz. And that will get our driverless AI instance up and running. The other thing we want to do is Terminal shell new window. I want to um, SCP. What was that command we had over here when we logged in? This one minus O up to the port number, the IP number rather. SCP prod H2O data. I've got some loan data here, CSV file that I want to um, bring up to. Actually, this should really be after the switches. Prod H2O data, loan, loan data. Bring up to there and go to data. SCP that file up. So that'll take a moment to get up and running. In the meantime, we are loading up our Docker instance. Driverless AI should be coming up pretty quickly. Meantime, we've got data there. If I did an SSH in up to here and go back to that host, we can see our data directory. We've got our loans file there. This is some loan information of consumer loan payments. And what we can do is run a simple experiment. Once we get Driverless AI up and running, to predict whether users will or consumers will default on their loan, right? So just a sample data set that we've loaded up there. Get started, and then we're going to browse right to that node once it's up and running. There we go. So now we can do our scripts start. Now that we've got the Docker image loaded, and there we go. That's up and running. So if we come back, we can grab that IP address again and paste that, colon, port 5 is our port, and we are presented with an interface to get into driverless AI. The first thing we see is that we need to enter a license. I have that email that I remember, right? So I had received an email. This is just a simple email that came out from an automated system giving you a temporary license key. We'll take that, paste that in here. You can see it reverts into where it was created, the time, expiration date, that sort of thing. We've got that loaded. I can now run an experiment. I can say create a new experiment and select browse for data. There's my loan data that we just brought up. We'll import that into the system. I can then select my target column. Again, we're looking for verification status of loans. We'll actually drop this interest rate column, which is uh, going to have correlated data. And we can adjust the settings here on accuracy, time, interpretability, but we'll just kick this off just to show that now we've got driverless AI up and running and we have created our or started our first experiment. There are other videos on the website that give detail around actually driving driverless AI and all the capabilities in there. I encourage you to go look at those and view them. And good luck in getting your first instance up and running. Thank you for listening.